Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at creating matrices with the Lattice 2 workbench. We're going to learn how to create a matrix from a sketch that's been extruded, joining those extrudes together with a linear array and then using arrays of those linear arrays along the different axes to make the matrix. We can use that matrix to save on such things as 3D printing costs or do some prototyping or even make custom matrix arrays by using the part workbench and using the boolean features within that workbench itself. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So we're in FreeCAD and we've started a new document. First of all, I'm going to create a shape. So I'm going to come down to the sketcher, create a sketch, XY plane. And what we're going to do is create a very simple L shape in here. You can use the polyline and place lines along the vertical and horizontal axis to allow us to create an L shape, like so. I'm going to make sure that this length here has got horizontal and this one's got a vertical constraint and also we're going to make these two equal. We're going to do the same with these two so those are equal as well and now we can start putting in some dimensions so this length here I'm going to use a horizontal length of 5 mil. And this length here will need a vertical length of 20 millimeters. And we're fully constrained. Let's come out of here, hit close. And all we're going to do is come over to the part workbench. Click on that sketch and use the extrude. Now we're going the length along and we can set that to 5 millimeters. So that's the same length as this edge here and this edge and hit OK. So we've got our L shape in here. What I want to do is make another arm that goes this way that's the same length as these. So we've got to take account for the five millimeters here. So our length going up, well these are 20 millimeters so it'll be 15. So click on that face and we're actually going to create a sketch in there. Well, we need to be on the sketcher workbench. Let's click off and come over to the sketcher. Didn't have to click off, but I've just done that. Click on that face and create a sketch. This will attach the sketch to that face and it will attach it as flat face and hit OK. That means that's sitting on that face there. I'm going to import the geometry using this tool here, create an edge link to external geometry. Click on it. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to hover over this point. So this vertex in here. And just import that vertex. We've got this vertex, which is our center of origin, our point of origin. So we don't need any more. I'm now going to come over to the rectangle tool or the square tool. Hover over that point there because we've got the auto constraints on. So you can see that's auto constraints to that point and we're going to come down and do the same to the other one and that will automatically create a constrained square in there let's hit close now we've got that sketch there we can come over to the part workbench click the sketch make sure that sketch is selected it's highlighted in green and then we can use the extrude so when we extrude this, we've got to extrude it by 15 millimeters because we've got a five millimeter length here. This means that this arm, I hit OK, from here to here would be 20 millimeters, the same length as this and this. So we have this feature here. I'm going to Boolean these two together. So I'm going to select one, control select the other, go up to part, come down to Boolean, make a union of those two objects. Now what we can also do is click on the fusion 
and come down to the refine, which is actually on the data tab. So this refine here, I set that to true. And what happens, it will remove that face from there. So now we have this object. We're going to make an array out of this. So the idea is to take the fusion and duplicate it out many times. So it creates basically an array of these that are all connected together. Let's go over to the Lattice Workbench. Now, if you haven't got this installed, you'll need to install it from the Tools and Add-on Manager, and you can install it in there. Now, what I'm going to do is just position myself in the correct orientation for this. So I'm going to go from the front. All arms are the same, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to select the bottom edge. That means that we can use the Linear Array, so Lattice 2, Linear Array, and we'll just select the first one and that will attach a linear array to that edge like so we're going to do the same for each of these edges so this one here this time i'm going to use the toolbar so we'll click on the linear array drop this down and use the same one and we'll do it for this one as well linear array and the span end because that's what we've been using now we've got those in there i'm just going to rename these so if we look at this and look at the gizmo or the handler down here, we can see Z is running up, Y is running this way, and X is running this way. So this one, this one here will be Z. This one is going to be Y. And this one, if I can get it, it's going to be X. Now we've got these renamed, we can use these to create our array. So let's see what happens when we try to populate one of these arrays. Let's take the fusion and then control click one of the arrays. I'm going to go for this one, linear array X. You can choose it from the tree view if you so desire, come up to lattice 2, populate with copies, populate with copies. Let's place those all along that linear array this way. And we have a new tree item, populate linear array X with fusions. This is the reason why we've renamed these. Let's come into that and we can see the fusion and the linear array within. Let's click the linear array X and come down to the generator which is here we can see it's span n we need to change this to step n because we want to step this a distance next come down to the steps and set this to 20 and hit enter what's happened is that this is step this 20 millimeters this way so remember the arms are 20 millimeters this is taken account for in the steps so now we have this object that is connected all the way through here. If we change the count, say six, what will happen is a new one will be added at the correct distance away. Let's bring this back down to five. We are now going to build an array along one of these other linear arrays along this axis. For that, we need to click the populate linear array. Let's just shrink that down so we can actually see it. And then control click the linear array Y. So this time we're gonna go this way. Now we're gonna go up to lattice two, populate with copies, but this time populate with copies build array. We can see what's happened. We're now starting to build the array this way. Let's come into that populate with copies and again to the linear array, this time linear array Y. And we're gonna do the same, come down, look at the generator, set this to step, step N, come down to the step and set this to 20. We have now got an array of arrays. So now we can repeat the process for this array here. 
the last one that in array z. Let's collapse that object there. So we've got this object, it's quite a longer name, but we're going to do the same. Click the populate linear array, control click the linear array z. This time we're going to use the toolbar. So it's this object here, drop it down, populate with copies, build array, and now we've built the array up this way. Same process, open up the new object, click on the linear array z, come down to the generator, step n, change the step to 20, to the length of the arm, hit enter, and now we've built the array up this way. Now we can start cleaning this up, so we can come in and hide this linear array z, press the spacebar, come into this hidden object here, hide this array, and again come in and hide linear array x and the fusion. So we've gone into all those objects that have created our top level object and hidden all of them. So now we have this matrix. Let's fusion all these together. So to do that, we come over to the part. We click on the top level object, this one here. The whole lot is highlighted. And we do our basic boolean, part, boolean, and union. That's created a fusion of that object, which we can also refine. So clicking on the fusion, this refine is false. I set this to true. And you can see that's refined in there. So now we've got this object. So we've created that matrix. What can we use it for? Well, we can change the geometry within to best suit our needs. Or we could even use this in some kind of Boolean operation. For example, I have a cinder here and I have the matrix. If I move this cylinder inside by right click, transform, move it inside the object. And then hitting OK, we can add a Boolean operation to this against the fusion. So let's click both of these, control click both of those, come up to the part, Boolean, and make an intersection. We have now created a matrix in the shape of a cylinder. You may want to create this as the internal structure to something that you're creating for a 3D print to actually save on material. For instance, if I control Z this, and if I create a sketch in here and do an intersection with the sketch once it's extruded, then I could use that as the internal to that by placing another sketch on top and sketching on top of that and union in that object. So if I did this with a cylinder and created the intersection, Then I could create a sketch on top of here. So on here over in the sketcher and create a sketch, place it flat face. And we can add a circle. Hit close, come back over to the part, extrude that sketch with the extrude by something like three millimeters. Close that. And then we can actually attach this to here just with the standard boolean. So we can use the common that's been created, control click the extrude and just make a union. The union of those parts and apply. And close that. We can do the same to the bottom. Therefore, when we 3D print this, we have still a structure within that's as strong as the cylinder, but we've saved on material within this by adding this matrix. So that's how to use the build array within the Lattice 2 workbench. Hope you found that useful and I'll see you again soon.
If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.